What is with you and your Michelob Ultra since JFK? <laughs> I love this beer. This is my travel beer. We were texting as we were both in, in cars to the airport, and he was just like, yeah, I just can't wait to get through security and get a Michelob Ultra. Yeah, and then we sit, we sit down and we find the, what was her name? Was it, was it Trish? Was Trish the bartender's name? Chris? Donna. Donna. Was it Donna? I think. It wasn't Donna. I'm lying. I would remember Donna because my first friend growing up was Adriana Donna Villacari and her mother's name was Donna, her father's name was Glenn, her brother's name was Anthony. He was in the name Cash Cast. Adriana was my first name. Aj, Rihanna Donna Villacari. I would remember a Donna. I never forget a Donna. Yeah, that's your brain. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in New Jersey. <laughs> Wait, that's never the response to that. <laughs> It's normally <laughs> It's normally like I grew up in New Jersey. Oh. We thought we smelled something. Um, no, but we were there and we decided like we're flying. Let's be let, let's be Bloody Mary girls. Bloody and we Mary. sit down and we're like, no, make it out here strong. We're gonna have a really good time. And we sit down and we're drinking <laughs> And James is like, ah, oh, this is so nice, we get to relax. And I'm like, yeah, we have 15 minutes, and the flight leaves at 1.30. And he was like, Daphne, it is 1.22. <laughs> it's been boarding. It's been boarding, and we're ordering naked chat with Donna about how I really like her hepatite bracelet. <laughs> so we slug these Bloody Marys. Oh god. Yeah, just like oh, just god. spicy booze. Just chugging spicy booze with pickles. <laughs> just <laughs> <yeah. on. laughs> All aboard the IBS plane. All aboard. <laughs> oh, god. Oh, god. And then the fucked up part was we ordered another double bloody mary each yeah. on the flight. What's wrong with us? I mean there's a word for it, but as soon as you say it, it's real. <laughs> Right now, she just likes to have fun. <laughs> right now, she's just a fun girl. It's a fun girl, likes to have a good time and talk a lot. <laughs> and I do talk quite a bit. And I'm, um, I hope you guys will forgive me for that. <laughs> because I promise that it's all aiming towards something that I frame to myself as some uh, self-improvement. <laughs> Being a good person. It's um, an overwhelming thing, and, and was anyone kind enough to catch our show on the main stage? Uh, thank you for being here. We were um, we were all excited, and you guys were wonderful, and we feel very good this week. But this was actually in our set, and we cut a lot out of that set. So this is one of our originals. <laughs> She doesn't have much to say. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm thinking about how I can recalibrate approaches to my life and all the tools I use to navigate the process of allowing all myself to start to integrate. I'm married to myself, so we kind of got to consummate. For me, that starts with holding space to self-interrogate and hold myself accountable, but not begin to flagellate. It's one thing to critique. It's another to eviscerate. You gotta find the line. You gotta bless the girl and keep the game. Like when I think about the plastic that I'm using and the hurricanes and climate change and time that we're all losing, and I start to drown in guilt about the planet we're abusing. Is that really being fair? Is the play for climate change really mine alone to bear? And not the hunter corporations that are ruining the air? Maybe going after them would be a better way to care. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like growth to me. Like I'm following through on a sacred oath to be. More compassionate and logical it can be both if we can afford ourselves just a little bit of patience. Funny how we use the word afford, like our patience isn't something we can give them our accord. Like, like generosity of spirit is a thing we have to hoard. Well, I literally called the guy I paid around my lord. So that's a relic from when property was futile. Even hoping for a better life or property was futile. But is how we do it now any less innate or brutal? Honestly, can we just throw away a whole caboodle? But throwing it away isn't helping anyone. That really only indicates a tendency to run. Plus, redesigning ways of life could be kind of fun, but it's easy to imagine and it's hard to get it done. Since clearly all the structures of humanity are frangible, what if we recenter and remember that we're animals? The global is unwieldy, but the personal is manageable. So I'm gonna focus, I'll start with something tangible. So I'm going to engage within my sphere and operate on hope instead of out of fear and build community instead of bask in trans white tears and participate in networks of nurture. But maybe I'm just being an emotional cancerian. Maybe compensating for being non-ovarian. Like a really hot 
Let's sweep a really undersexed librarian. <laughs> She's just doing her best, and her best is taking her exactly this far.